4.1 An Introduction to Chemical Bonds, Tuesday, November 12th. This lesson is for Tuesday, November 12th, and it's the first lesson in Unit 4, Chemical Bonding. So when we think about chemical bonds, we need to consider how it applies to our everyday lives. For example, we all know about the compound sodium chloride, or NaCl, commonly known as table salt. We can actually use it on different foods like steaks, burgers, or even fries from McDonald's. But if we look at the elements individually, which are sodium, Na, and chlorine, which is Cl, we'll see that they can be very reactive and even potentially very dangerous. So sodium, for example, symbol Na, is an element that actually can explode in water. Chlorine symbol Cl is an element that's very poisonous as a gas. So we actually have to wonder, why are these elements combined together so safe to use in our food? The reason for this is that chemical bonds actually make the system the elements are involved in more stable and the compound formed as a result of combining those two elements chemically together is chemically very different from the elements. So that's why sodium Na and chlorine Cl chemically bonded in the compound known as table salt or sodium chloride symbol NaCl for uh, the compound sodium chloride is so safe to use in food because sodium chloride NaCl is chemically different when it's bonded compared to sodium Na or chlorine Cl alone. So that means it won't explode in water and it won't be poisonous as a gas. Instead, it can be used as table salt or just salt on foods like steaks, burgers, or fries. So before we go into chemical bonds and what they are, let's talk about some background terminology. First, we have atoms. Atoms are basic units of a chemical element. So one element like chlorine or Cl is considered an atom of one element since there's only one element there. So just think if you have one element only there, it's always going to be considered an atom. Next we have molecules and a molecule is a group of atoms combined together and actually held by a chemical bond which is a lot like glue. So a chemical bond is a lot like glue. So for example H2O shown here is two H's which are these green spheres down here and 1O, which is this blue sphere in the middle, uh, combined together and held by a bond. That's a lot like glue. And also, Cl2 up here is two Cl's, or two Cl atoms, which are these two red spheres, combined together and held like glue. Finally, we have reactions, and reactions are processes where two things, known as reactants, which are on the left side of the arrow, combine, act on each other, and change into completely different things, known as products. So products are actually on the right side of the arrow, and reactants are on the left side of the arrow. So think of reactants as what goes into a reaction, on the left side and think of products as what comes out on the right side or basically what's produced in a reaction. So basically reactants go in, arrow, and products come out. Now let's talk about what chemical bonds actually are. Chemical bonds are attractive forces that hold atoms together in a compound uh, a lot like NaCl or sodium chloride, which we saw two slides ago. So you can think of it as glue holding two atoms together. And the energy involved here is potential energy, which is the energy that's actually stored in that bond. And the way energy and attraction work is that electrons um, outside of the nucleus, so these blue minuses outside the nucleus, of one atom um, attract to the protons in the nucleus, 
which are represented by these yellow positive smiley faces. All right, so opposites will basically attract. And this is shown by figure one down here, just as I pointed to it before. So uh, when atoms combine, generally, there's a tug of war over the outermost electrons out here. So they're the outskirts, sort of, or the outermost electrons, which actually will be much more important later in this unit. Now we need to talk about what happens to energy when these bonds are actually made and broken. But in the meantime, before we move on to the next slide, we just need to remember that we can actually think of attraction and chemical bonds as Romeo and Juliet being attracted to each other, which we'll talk about in the next couple of slides. But let's just remember the electrons, which are these negatively charged blue spheres um, on the outside of the nucleus of one atom are attracted to the protons or these positive smiley faces inside the nucleus of another atom. So opposites attract, and when atoms combine, there's a tug of war over the um, outermost electrons, like this and this. So they're kind of playing tug of war. So let's first talk about making a bond. When you're making a bond, energy is released when a bond is formed. So, as a result, the stability of the system increases as the atoms actually start coming together. An example of this is atom B right here and atom C right here reacting to form this molecule BC, which produces energy out here. So, it produces energy. So it means that energy actually comes out on the product side or the right side of the arrow. So we can think of this as Romeo and Juliet using figure 2A down here. So if we look at figure 2A, which says energy changes in making bonds, we can think of atoms uh, B and C as Romeo and Juliet being separate atoms. So when they come together and make a bond, down here as molecule BC or a couple, they actually calm down and they're a lot less hyper because they're actually considered much more stable together as a couple. So let's just remember B plus C are Romeo and Juliet separately as atoms and then um, they come down, make a bond, form a couple, form a molecule, and they're much less hyper. So energy comes out or energy is released. Now, let's consider the opposite case, where we break a bond. When we're breaking a bond, energy is generally absorbed to break a bond. So the stability of the system actually decreases as the atoms break apart. An example of this is energy being put in to the reactant side, so that's the left side, with this molecule BC, to... Um, basically break it apart into atoms B and C on the product side. So that's the right side of the arrow. So we can think of this um, as basically uh, the reactants or the molecule or the system rather needs energy and energy goes in to break it apart from the molecule BC to atoms B and C separately. So we can think of this again as Romeo and Juliet using figure 2B, which says energy changes in breaking bonds. So if we look at figure 2B, we can think of molecule BC down here as Romeo and Juliet being a stable couple. And it takes energy actually to um, break Romeo and Juliet up. And when they're separated like B and C, which are separate atoms, as a result, B and C right here, separate atoms, they go crazy and become hyper because they're considered less stable, split up, and they're more stable when they're together. So when they're split up, they're considered less stable, and they're hyper and crazy. Now let's try two examples based on what we've learned. So here's example one. 
The first question asks us to explain uh, the energy and force behind chemical bonds in HBr. And the second question asks us to explain what happens during the reaction of H and H to produce an H2 molecule and energy as well as Y. So if we apply what we know in question one, first of all, we know potential energy is stored in bonds and that bonds form when protons in one atom are attracted to electrons in another atom. And this is because, again, opposites attract. Protons are positive, electrons are negative, so opposites attract. And then, uh, for question two, the reaction leads to energy being released because, let's just remember, um, a bond forms between the H atoms to make an H2 molecule, and as a result, they become more stable. Think of this, again, as uh, two separate atoms, or Romeo and Juliet being separate, and then when they come together as a couple, it's considered more stable. So the system's considered more stable, like a molecule. So the molecule is considered more stable um, when energy is released compared to the H atoms being apart from each other. So when energy is released, the system is more stable. So this next example asks us to explain what happens during the reaction of Br2 and energy to produce two separate Br atoms as well as Y. Well, we know that energy is absorbed during the reaction because the bond in the Br2 molecule is actually broken apart into the two separate Br atoms, and that makes the system less stable. We can think of this as Romeo and Juliet as a couple, and it takes energy to break them apart, and then when they're separated, they become hyper and crazy as a result. So just like that, when Br2 is, um, when there's energy in there, the energy goes up. So this last slide, I'd like for you to try on your own uh, for homework and hand it in on Tuesday, November 12th. Thank you very much.